We are out here at COSA in beautiful Bend, Oregon, doing a fun club match. We're gonna be shooting eight relays, so four today, four tomorrow. I've got my gear set up. This is who I'm shooting with, and today we're going to be doing pair firing, and tomorrow we will do string firing. So let's go have some fun. Here is the first target of the day, and you know, honestly, conditions were pretty light. There was just a little bit of movement, but I mean, honestly, I wasn't holding any more than, oh boy, probably maybe one line, something like that. It, it was really pretty minimal. The load was obviously shooting a little taller than I'd like. You can see it had about eight inches of vertical. And what you're gonna see throughout all these targets is two totally different loads that I was alternating. So we're just gonna call this load number one and then I'll just reference load number two when I'm showing that to you and we can kind of talk about that. But, uh, you know, kept it pretty centered up. Now this one, I'm just gonna tell you, we were pair firing. You can see I was shooting with Jason. And, <laughs> you know, this is one of those things where sometimes you just have to believe yourself and not what someone else does. And, and I just fell into that trap. And you can see I had a really good vertical, or, you know, like um, a really good uh, X-ring centered up here. I mean, it was just a little to the left, but really it was pretty much, um, you know, my, 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 my horizontal here was, was pretty much tucked in. And then you can see this is shot number six and then Jason shot and he shot, you can't see his shot, but, uh, where is my nine here? So it must've been this nine for him. So he shot a nine and it was out here. I mean, it was pretty wide and it was right after he had shot, um, you know, a pretty decent 10 somewhere. And so I went, wow, maybe I kind of, you know, it started to pick up near, you know, a little bit, but I, nothing that I would have suspected was worth, you know, more than maybe half a line. And so he, he winged one way out here. And originally I was going to hold uh, right about out here on left two and then, or left one. And then I see him wing this one way out here and I went, oh crap maybe I should just take a little extra. So I come out to left two, and then of course I send one just outside the line. And, you know, if I had just been holding, you know, my previous previous hold, which was right about here, that was six. And then you can see I went back to the same hold. So I was here, shot six, went out here, shot seven, then came back in and shot eight. And I'm pretty sure I ran most of them out holding right about in here. So. Um, you know, like I said, it was a, it was a, you know, maybe a one line day kind of in and out, uh, for this particular match, you know, this, this kind of sucked, but really like, I didn't really care about this cause I wasn't, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I was testing out two loads and wanted to see what was working. This is what I really didn't like. I don't like, I had a really clear sight picture. There was no mirage, not like later that you're going to see, but I, I was just really disappointed that it was shooting three of them down here. Without this, you know, okay, you know, I could probably suck this up to a five inch vertical or so, but really this is, this is a much bigger group than I would have liked to seen in a nearly dead condition for the most part. Uh, let's go to the next target here. This is what we are going to call uh, load number two. And this was quite honestly disastrous. Um, I don't know what happened. Uh, these, a lot of these up here, you can see my ES right here. Now I don't totally trust the shot marker data to be, you know, dead on, but it's definitely a good indicator. And you can see how big this, this ES was. I mean, it was, it was big. And that's because I started off great. You can see like it was shooting great. And then all of a sudden it just started scattering in these really hot loads. And clearly I made a mistake. I don't know what happened. I, I really don't have a good idea and that's sort of weird because I'll just, you know, spoiler alert, this was sort of the anomaly of everything. So something happened in here with these 10 or 13 loads where, I don't know, something happened uh, that was causing really valid serious elevation. Like down here compared to up here was about 60 feet per second difference. I mean, it was moving. It wasn't like 10 feet or something. So this data is pretty much just has to be thrown out because there is no way to know what the load was really doing. It was just a botched load. So that kind of sucked. Here is load one. So the same one that I shot on the opening match or relay, whatever you want to call it. And you can see I made a tuner change. I moved about 10 lines in. Uh, it was getting hotter. 
you know, some of the environmentals were changing to where I felt like I needed to come in, especially because it wasn't shooting all that tight to begin with on the first one. And this definitely made a difference. And the thing to keep, remember, kind of keep in mind, is that, you know, this is a little bit later. We're at 10 o'clock. The sun was picking up. It was getting up to, I mean, we, we topped out at almost 100 this day. It was like 97 or something. Uh, by the time 10 o'clock came around, we had already jumped up like 20-something degrees, maybe more. Mirage was picking up. And when you've got kind of a warbly mirage out there, you're never going to get a true read on what your vertical is because you never know if you're actually aiming dead center because you're getting a little bit of that bounce. You're doing your best to control it. There's tricks that we do, but it's still not perfect. So I felt like this was actually a really good indicator of that load. Again, it didn't shoot horrible on the first one. It just wasn't great. This was definitely a lot better. I made a bad call out here. I thought the wind was letting off, and, and so I, I went uh, went out down there. But I uh, almost went out, but I, significantly outside the group. But other than that, I'm happy with how this shot. So load one, I would say, proved itself pretty well today. Not fantastic. Definitely needs to get tweaked. But it's hard to compare against load number two that we just saw because load number two was pretty much blown. So the next one I'm going to show you is load number two again. But before I do that, I just want to show you a little bit of the pair firing that we did with a couple of my buddies that were on the ground um, before I shot my uh, next and final match for the day. X, 19. Nice shooting, Brian. This is load two. So this is the one where before, remember, we had, I mean, giant nine ring vertical. It was like 16 inches of vertical because my load was just blown apart for some reason. Uh, this one definitely shot better. Now, I did a horrible job managing this. The wind had really picked up just in the almost hour since, uh, since the previous one. And I just... I fell apart like I really was struggling to keep it and and this was a left to right wind and I just could not keep it on the upside I was making bad decisions and just fell behind but again as we're looking at this from a testing standpoint this is horrible and and this you know this tells me there's something wrong with the tune that you know the load and and how it's tuned uh, I should not be having this separation down here uh, it's probably you know, probably needs to be dropped down a little bit. Uh, I still had some de decent ES spreads on this at Target, which, you know, I don't feel like there should have been that much. But again, this was just really frustrating. Um, you know, it's, it's not normal, but I'm human. I make mistakes. So this was a tough one to judge for this particular load. So load two, I would say it's, I don't know, it's unreadable for the day. Load number one, I'd give it a B. You know, it's 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 shootable. It's probably club match level. It's definitely not a regional or national level load yet. So we're going to head over to a friend's house tonight. I got, I think, a couple pics and some video or something kind of showing you what we did for fun. And then we're going to come back and do this again tomorrow. All right, we got we got a game of washers going on here. This is what we do after matches. Well, that and the alcohol, but you know. We are starting off Sunday morning and I am flip-flopping the loads just so that I run them in a different order. So yesterday we went one, two, one, two. And if you remember, load one definitely proved itself better, but still about a B rate. The load two, I would say it was almost not worth trying to read anything off of kind of a waste of time energy money everything so we're going to start off with load number two now i did make a little bit of an adjustment to my tuner uh just because of what was going on outside and this thing shot tall now on target es at least dropped it was the lowest that load two has been so 
that's a positive. It it shot pretty well. I mean, I you know, I mean, I shot a clean. It's it's in what I would call an ugly clean. I mean, I barely barely caught 17, barely caught 18 up here. The rest of it was grouped up okay, but this definitely tells me that just like we saw on the last one where we had those three shots, remember there was three shots coming out the bottom. This load wants to blow apart. It's it's there's something about it. It's not tuned right. I probably need to drop a tenth or two tenths uh, to really get this thing to come back together. It it wants to fall apart. Uh, and and you know I don't know. It's just one of those things. Different temperature, humidity, whatever it is out there. This load did not want to play well. So now we have this one's at least readable. That's what I'll say. But load number two is definitely telling me that it is being a little pickier um, <laughs> so far. Uh, let's head over to so this is going to be load one so we saw load two a second ago now this is load one and it opened up so now we almost have a reversal from the previous day i'll be honest th this was this was a very frustrating shooting you know i've got, I've got a couple weeks until nationals i was really feeling like both of these we're shooting much better than this for me at my club. And so to have both of them start falling apart was, you know, honestly a little frustrating, but you know, that's the game we play. Very tall, you know, you can see it's, you know, nine inches of vertical. I mean, that's just unacceptable. Missed a shot, whatever, that happens now. But, uh, you know, I was centered up otherwise, but the vertical and the overall group size is really concerning. I just I don't you know like when you have a group shooting this big you can't even trust that this was a bad wind call this could be part of the load I mean you can shoot wide with a bad load as much as you can shoot tall with a bad load you know big ES spreads I mean just really weird and, and I, I I just have to tell you I honestly don't know and I'm really doing a little bit of soul searching here I've got some testing uh, you know, this was a couple days ago, obviously. I'm actually in the middle of testing and, and trying to dial in one of these again or, or get close. And, uh, and it's looking better, but, um, you know, this just left me a little dumbfounded. Here we are back on load number two. So this is, this is the load that was super tall the previous day, then kind of blowing apart at the end of the day. It was okay first thing in the morning, but not great. And again, it's just a big group. Sure, it's, you know, it's like a, just under eight inch group. And technically, you know, technically it's it's a decent score. You know, I dropped, uh, you know, I dropped one uh, right here with number eight. But, you know, this is just an ugly group when you are trying to get ready for a national level match. And, you know, I, I know it's easy for people to say, oh, like, you know, it always works for me and I know what I'm doing. And, and look, I, you know, I, I've won big matches and, and I've lost plenty of them, you know, like you can't always be <laughs> at the top and, and I've had more than my fair share of not being at the top. And this kind of load is the kind of load that keeps you from being at the top. So while it's a good score, I wasn't shooting to win this match, you know. I mean, yes, I wanted to shoot a good score because shooting a good score would help indicate that the load was capable. But I was fighting these loads, like, all weekend. I'm fighting the loads more than I'm fighting the conditions. And that is not how you want to be shooting. And this is the last target of the day. And it's just ugly. This is, uh, so this is going to be load number one. This is the one that I said was, you know, maybe a B load yesterday. It looked like it was opening up a little bit. And then it just, like, this wasn't even from me. I mean, like, I don't even know what this was from. It's just, it's ugly. But, you know, like, I think it's important that, that, you, that you see this. Because this is the reality of working up loads. Sometimes... You do your best. You get things that are dialed in. I mean, I was shooting really high X count, 600 yard targets with this load. And it just fell apart in the conditions I was in. So I went from shooting in, you know, roughly 60, 70 degree medium humidity weather and brought this out to the desert where it was close to 97, 98 degrees and, you know, dry as a popcorn fart. And, you know, it 
it moved more than I expected and more like I shoot at this range, you know, on a fairly decent basis. Uh, I've taken plenty of loads out there and had high confidence and shot well with them, but this just wasn't doing it. So, you know, you chalk it up as a bad experience, but you have to walk away and you have to be able to learn from it. My big walk away with this is that I have to almost throw the baby out with the bathwater here. And, and that means that I have to start over. And so, as I said earlier, you know, this match was four or five days ago. In the meantime, I have gone back, done a leather ladder test, just basically reworked the load very quickly to make sure that I didn't miss something as I was putting this load together, because this should not have happened. Statistically, the way it was shooting, the the node that it was in, everything about this should have been way better than all these targets that you saw. Now, I'm not saying they should have been tiny three inch groups, but they should have been consistent. And there was zero consistency day to day, load to load. Very, very frustrating. So with that, I'm gonna go back. I've got two weeks until nationals. Like I literally have two weeks until I fly out to nationals. So. I am rapidly putting together another load. I've done it before. I'm not worried about it. I just wish I didn't have to do it. So all I can say is if this is happening to you, you are not alone. This does happen to everybody. I don't care who you are or who you think is perfect at shooting. This happens to them. And with that, all I can tell you is get out and shoot. Have some fun. We will talk soon.